Yeah, welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the Money Wise channel. <laughs> On this channel, we're going to talk about inspirational events and a lot of great money things. <laughs> That's the whole thing on here. I like to just give my reaction to something I saw and maybe it can inspire you, inspire you to be great or just to get a different perspective or something. Anything like that. Have a little fun in your day with so much stuff going on in the world. You could just put on the headphones if you're at work or you're just riding around or you just want to just think about something else besides all the crazy stuff going on in the world. You can check me out <laughs> while well, learning something. So today we're going to be talking about a mafia boss by the name of Michael Frenzies. And um, just speaking about this interview I seen that he just had, it was very interesting. The actual interview was on a hundred million dollar industry scam secret. So basically, he was just breaking down all the different secrets, millions and millions of dollars of secrets that the music industry has, entertainment industry overall. It was very interesting. And this particular mafia boss, his name is Michael Franzese. And he was a capo. In the Columbia crime family from Brooklyn, New York. Very powerful guy. Knew everything that was happening around him and his um, situation. He, he, when you're a capo, you have a lot of power. And that's what I want you to understand. Because you might hear this and think he was just talking from a third party situation. Like I'm doing. No, this is actually him in the interview speaking on what he knows so it's all firsthand so one of the things he spoke on was a fellow mafia guy by the name of morris levy morris levy was a guy that was a ceo of roulette records and he was stealing the masters royalties and the publishing royalties from artists that he signed to his label and he would also rob the other people in the industry because if they put out records, he would go duplicate their records and put it inside the record stores and people would buy their buy theirs and not buy theirs. And so when the record company come to him and ask for help because they knew he was connected to the mafia, he would charge them, take his own records out and just start another company and start putting in more. So this kept happening over and over and over. And he was just continually getting paid off of this same scam over and over. And this is one of the things that the mafia boss was speaking about that he had Morris Levy had this hundred million dollar industry scam that he just continued to do over and over to get money for them, which is crazy. Then he also had this other thing where he would take his artist and he would put his name down on the publishing saying he wrote the record. So he would not only get the masters on that side, he would get the publishing saying he wrote records. He didn't even write. Now, if he wrote it, that's fine, but it's still in when you didn't write it and you put your name on it. So he was getting the master royalties and he was also still in the, publishing royalties from the artist now to be clear if you don't know what publishing is it's whenever a song is played anywhere for it's streaming or played on the radio all that's publishing and he would receive all those things so if you hear a song on the radio today Somebody's getting paid publishing. You go push a stream or just play a stream. Somebody's getting publishing. And he was just keeping it, putting it, putting his name on it, saying it was him that wrote it. So that way it wouldn't even be questioned because he said he wrote it. So there was really nothing you could really say. And if you said something because he was connected with the mafia or the mob, he could get, you know, you know what could happen. So it was a terrible situation for these artists and, and everybody else he was messing with. Cause if he could do that with the industry, you got to think what he was doing with the average person that he was actually signed to him. You got to think about that. If he's dealing with 
multi-million dollar companies at that point like this and they were scared of him you gotta think with the average guy with talent or female with talent or band what they had to deal with they didn't even know how to approach him frankie lyman uh that wrote the song why do fools fall in love he put his name on that you go read it, it says morris levy on that song clearly he didn't write that you know but he takes money off of that and Frankie Lyman questioned him many times about that, but it never went well. So there's actually a movie called Why Do Fools Fall In Love, which you can watch and you can see all that. So it's very interesting, you know. So eventually, Morris Levy got arrested. And it was such a big deal when he got arrested for all the stuff he was doing. They did it live on national TV. Not live on national TV, they arrested him. And they arrested him for like fraud, stealing, bad contracts. Even connected to murder and payola, which is payola, which is paying for people to play your records on the radio when they don't even want to play it, but you pay them or force them to do it. So this is crazy how this all happened. And basically the mafia boss, Michael Frenzies, he was explaining it. So I always like to say to people, you gotta understand a basic record deal. Because people say, How can he steal the publishing? How can he do this? How can listen? A basic record deal is this, you sign over most or all of your rights, two, you get upfront money for it, it's like a loan, and three, you need to recoup all this money back before you ever see any money. That's basically how it works. You know, that's basically how it works. So the main question is, is it fair or unfair? Fair or unfair? <laughs> well, it's up to you because it's all about perspective. There's no judgment. It's bad and good and everything. If you think about it, you could work at a factory job, work 40 hours a week or, or, or more. But if you're, let's say you're working on a car at Ford factory, well, that car you work on, you got, you got to know that it's worth more when they sell it. So you're making pennies for your time. Most important thing is time at the end of the day, because you only got so many years. You work a job, you'll give them 40 years of your life before you retire. Then you're no you're all messed up your money messed up and you're just trying to make it when they made millions probably off of just you so people say that's not how it works it's just like that with a house you you go get out you go get a house you better believe they're gonna give you a loan on it and you're gonna have to pay more for that loan this is just life it's just how it works so it's all about opportunity taking an opportunity and making it work for you whatever it may be make it work for you make a decision and just stand on it so that's my outlook of it you know so stay excited about life um, I will be dropping more videos um, trying to keep you inspired help you make good decisions just I just say think about stuff when before you make a move and just know faith without works is dead and remember your keep your eyes out for the small things as you are doing big things like and subscribe to this channel money eyes channel for more wisdom in the future and remember the plans may change but the goals stay the same like and subscribe i'll see you in the next video <laughs> yup <laughs>